I think what we, what we really need to think about is the position that he has been nominated for by, by, by this president-elect. Um, to be the attorney general means that you're responsible for the Department of Justice. Matt Gates's nomination has got everyone on the left completely fired up, and the view is no exception, especially Sonny Hostin. Let's take a look at this awkward moment. But first, let's see what they said about Matt Gates. And the Department of Justice is one of the largest um, law enforcement agencies in the world. And it's, it's very serious business. I mean, you have the Civil Rights Division, Antitrust Division, the Criminal Division, U.S. Attorney's Offices, the FBI. the FBI. And within the Department of Justice, you know, you have the Sex Crimes Unit, which is what I was a part of, child sex crimes and child trafficking. How could you nominate someone with allegations of child trafficking across the, or trafficking across state lines and having sex with a 17? If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me a lot. Let's continue watching. Standing further on in the interview, they discuss the fact that once he finds out that she's 17, he stops having sex with her. Well, statutory sex doesn't require you to know what age the person is. It only requires the age. And so if these things so are minute, true... So if you're having sex with an underage girl, yes. she tells you she's 18... Yes. And you do have it anyway. Yes. You're still liable. It's, yes, you, yeah, you okay. are. She's it's actually statutory. still only it's 17. Just to clarify. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I'm, I'm deeply disturbed at the lack of judgment mm -hmm. that we are already seeing from the president-elect. But you're you not know, surprised. A lot of, I'm not surprised, no. but I think a lot of people are. A lot of people said things like, he's just kidding. He would never do yeah. something. Well, this is... Matt Gates has long denied all allegations, calling the claims, quote, invented, and saying in a statement to ABC News that this false smear following a three-year criminal investigation should be viewed with great skepticism, that DOJ investigation was closed with no charges being brought. Everyone seems to have something to say about this, but let's stick to what we know. Trump clearly has the advantage here. High's not backing down and has made it very clear that he is sticking with his decision to nominate Matt Gates. This puts Republicans in a tricky spot. They either risk a huge political mess by going against Trump, who has strong public support, or they stand by his decision. The Department of Justice has already been accused of being weaponized, so rejecting Trump's pick could look really bad, especially when it is his right as president to nominate. Someone and if it comes down to it, Trump could always use our cess appointment to temporarily place Gates in charge of the DOJ. Note everyone agrees, though Sonny Hostin has been very vocal about her thoughts on this, and she is not holding back. Let's continue watching. Elect Donald Trump absolutely has a constitutional right to nominate him, and the Senate has the role of advising consent. If there is one person they're going to block, I would guess it'd be Matt Gates. Mm -hmm. And I think the way they'll do it is they'll say, let's not make this your problem, Donald Trump. I'm just going to say the votes aren't there. Put someone else up who can get through. Mm -hmm. I think the most likely scenario would be it's the deputy attorney general he's appointed, his criminal defense attorney, Todd Blanche, who... Whatever you think of him appointing his criminal defense attorney, he has the qualifications to be there. He's a mm -hmm. former federal po prosecutor. He worked for the Southern District of New York. Uh, but Matt Gates is a person of low moral character. This is widely known about him. And I'm kind of bullish he's not going to get through. He's doubling down on his decision to nominate Matt Gates, showing that he's not afraid to challenge the norms or push his agenda, regardless of how controversial it might be. From a strategic standpoint, He's banking on the fact that Republicans won't risk alienating his base by opposing him, especially when he has so much leverage within the party. At the same time, the accusation that the Department of Justice has been weaponized adds another layer to this. Trump's supporters see this as proof that he's standing up against what they view as an unfair system, and rejecting his pick could look like a betrayal to those voters. The possibility of using a recess appointment also shows Trump has a backup plan to bypass any resistance, which just strengthens his position. On the other hand, the backlash from people like Sonny Hostin reflects the intense opposition to this nomination. It's not just about Gates as a person, it's about what his appointment represents to critics of Trump's leadership. This whole situation is a prime example of the deep political divide we're living in right now, where every move feels like it's escalating the tension. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out, but one thing is clear. It's going to be a fight.